This video is brought to you by Vessi. Well, it has been a hot minute since I've done a top 10, especially for the worst animated films I've ever seen. Last time I did that was in summer of 2018, years ago, back when the world was still innocent and, and wasn't dying. In those two years since I made that video, I've seen some truly horrific things. You see, folks, when it comes to the top 10 worst animated films I've ever seen, well, the list is constantly shifting. Some choices get bumped down, newcomers arrive, a constant flux of change. And change is good, except for here, cause it only gets worse. Before I share this new top 10 list, let me tell you all real fast about my definition of a bad movie. First off, there's two types of bad movies to me. There's good bad, and then there's bad bad. A good bad film is when a movie tries. It thinks it's making something great, it's trying its best, but it's failing at the attempt. Bad voice acting, bad animation, bad something, or possibly everything. But there is a genuine attempt. And to me, that makes it a good bad. But when it comes to bad bad, there are two ways, in my opinion, how this is achieved. One, it's deliberately bad, like the Sharknado sequels, which try to be bad, and I think that ruins the immersion. It's no longer special to me. There's no charm, it's lost. It's trying to be something that it's not. Or, number two, it's boring. Like, you're sitting in a chair for an hour, staring at a chalkboard, and then someone takes their hand and fingernails and just slowly scratches down the chalkboard for the remainder of the film. It's boring and excruciating. That to me is bad, bad. Uh, and I guess there's number three, where it's just bad, where you grit your teeth and you're like, this is painful. This is uh, trying to say something, but it's failing and it makes me angry. Regardless if it's good, bad or bad, bad, I have this desire to know more to see how far I can descend into the abyss of these nightmares films and possibly discover if there's a bottom to it. Years ago, I thought I was at the bottom of the pit with Trollland. <laughs> I was wrong. In this world of ours, the possibilities are endless. And let's just say that there are some new contenders. So let's kick things off with number 10, which by the way, is probably my most controversial pick on the list. So let's just go ahead and address it. There will be some viewers who hate me for this one. The Lion King remake. I genuinely hate this movie. Now I know that when it comes to remakes for Disney, I typically don't care for most of them. I see them as shallow. I see them as a cash grab. I see them as lesser sons of greater sires. But I've become accepting of the nature of remakes where I'm like, this cash flow for Disney is not going to stop. And no matter how much I object to them, they're gonna keep coming. Also, I wanna see how bad they could possibly be. And when they announced the Lion King remake, I thought, really? You're going for the, the gold medal here, aren't you? The OG top tier animated film of Disney, one of the highest grossing films that they've ever accomplished during the 90s. So, okay, what you gonna do for it? Oh, it's hyper-realistic. Uh, okay. Oh, you replaced the entire cast. That makes sense, I guess. Oh, James Earl Jones, he stays? Why? Why him? Oh, because branding. Got it. Disney can't make its mind up with these remakes. It's half nostalgia, half new. What's going on? What's your angle? What are you trying to present? Because when I watch this movie, it's like that one picture where this little girl is drawing an outline of a kitty cat and the outline just looks so much worse than the original cat. It's like everything about this is terrible. It's so much worse than the original. The voice acting, the flow of the movie, the visuals, the execution, everything is worse in this. Oh, it's hyper-realistic, that's a selling point, but it doesn't lend itself well into emoting for the characters. The scene that broke me was when Mufasa fell, where it's like, Scar, brother, help me. By the way, James Earl Jones sounds so tired in his recordings. 
He's like in his 90s, I believe. But like, just the emotional impact that the original had, you feel it. And the performances, and the voice acting, and the emotions of the characters, everything in that scene is felt and just magnificent. But here it's like, it feels hollow, it feels lacking in emotion. It's a pale imitator of a greater film. And that's the main thing, is that it, it ultimately is a cash grab. You push it as hyper-realistic, but it hurts the narrative and the process. The emotional impact of it all, I'm not feeling it. Because these are animals. Animals don't really emote that well. So, uh, not feeling it. Compared to the animated one where it's like, well, the 2D animated one, the original, both are animated. Technically, this is not a live action remake at all. It's fully animated. But the, the original, you can see it in their faces and their emotions, how they're feeling, what's going on in their minds. Not in the remake, just not at all. But yeah, I just hated this film. I thought it was a shameless cash grab that was worse. It has a saving grace with the technical achievements of it all. Like these live action models are amazing, but they're so poorly used in this film. It should have been something different. Like in the Jungle Book remake, that made much more sense. Didn't like it that much, but it made more sense. Here though, mm, no thank you. Number nine, The Little Panda Fighter. So about a year or so ago, I was on this tangent of checking out all of these Kung Fu Panda ripoffs. And there's a lot of them and they're pretty bad. And one of them was The Little Panda Fighter, which by the way, if you don't know this movie's plot, you're probably thinking eh, it's probably an imitation of Kung Fu Panda with the fighting, right? No, 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 no. This story couldn't be further away from Poe and what he's gone through and what he's done. Not even close, not even in the same ballpark. Synopsis, we got Pancata, this dancing bear at a casino boxing store, restaurant, where he mistakenly is assumed to have been a fighter in this match. And folks are like, wow, I can't believe you fought. In reality, it was his boss who put on a costume and what he achieved, folks are, they think that Pancata did it. Pancata is like, cool, I'll run with that momentum and I'll actually fight in another battle, even though I can't fight. So he goes through a training thing with his boss, gets his butt kicked. The boss gambled the, a bunch of money on Pancata losing, cashed out, and then gave the establishment to Pancata so he can turn into a dance studio. What? What is the story? Excuse me? Like, even if it was its own original story without pandas, it's still a very confusing, weird plot that just feels so outlandish and confusing. What's going on? Who is what now, huh? And the character designs are awful, especially this booger bear. Ugh, stop it. Though this girl bear is pretty bad too, and her weird ass proportions. It's like, what are, what's these designs? Are you from the same universe even? So the little panda fighter was a little piece of shit. <laughs> Number eight, Izzy's Way Home. Well, this was on the original list of mine back in 2018, and it deserves a spot even in the year of our Lord 2020, because it is a shameless ripoff where the little panda fighter could have been planned with the intention of ripping off Kung Fu Panda. I also, think it's possible that the film was made and then the marketing team was like uh pretend it's kung fu panda it's close enough just go with it izzy's way home was made with the intention of ripping off finding nemo it was deliberate as in izzy's way home wouldn't exist if it wasn't for finding nemo existing in the first place you can almost feel marlin and dory's soul being sucked out of their bodies as this movie siphons away their life force. <sighs> I have to go see my son. Too late, I'm sucking away your talent and I'm gonna use it for marketing purposes. <sighs> Marlon, what's happening? I can't see a jellyfish. <laughs> the characters are so static. Uh, they're like little plastic toys floating around in the water and, and, and their movement's so all over the place. There are moments where the movement and the editing cuts are jarring, and I feel like I'm gonna throw up, where it's like, what's happening? Where are we? Who's this? What's even the action going on right now on this particular screen? It is so hard to follow. And then you combine that with these, like I said, static characters who feel like puppets with their mouth movement and have very little emotions. 
it just leaves you confused and abused. Also, where Finding Nemo and Finding Dory have magnificent backgrounds, on purpose because it's the ocean, they were aiming for immersion, trying to make the audience feel like they're actually there. Here, it's like the opposite. The textures are bad, the water effects are bad, the set designs are piss poor. It's terrible. It's like, what ocean are we in? Is this what happens after climate change? Everything's dead? Oh, okay. Izzy's Way Home is a warning, if anything. Number seven, The Prodigy. Just like the little panda fighter, I discovered this film while doing my Kung Fu Panda ripoff video. So The Prodigy was advertised to capitalize on the success of Kung Fu Panda. I also think that it was made with heavy inspiration from it as well. But where Kung Fu Panda was all anthro, here we've got humans. We got KG and a bunch of other characters who look like they're from anime. But lest we forget about the master panda, this little guy with his terrifying facial expressions and how his teeth stick out of his skull like a anteater mouth and how he plays music and does weird training and has very bad voice acting. By the way, I actually own the DVD for this. Let me let me read you all the back of it, all right? Here we go. Shy and humble, but skilled beyond her years, KG is a kung fu prodigy, yet she doubts her talent. But when the handsome Prince Po is kidnapped by a vindictive and jealous sorceress, KG is the only one strong enough to save him. With the help of zany but brave Master Panda, <laughs> KG sets off on adventures rescue quest. That's the line. Oh my god. A hilarious side splitting animated feature. Your phone's in mode. <laughs> just, just include that. It's better than the actual description of this movie. But yeah, it sucks. It's a bad movie. And it's got moments of like humorous, like, wow, it's, it's pretty bad. Kind of funny bad. But enough bad bad where it's uh it's draining. It, it, it drains the spirit, no doubt. Number six, Donkey Ollie. Donkey Ollie is someone who I've known for years. I've been recommended the series. I've even been sent 10 DVDs in the mail for Donkey Ollie. So it's like, yeah, you are like a bad dream that I have not had yet. But I ripped that band-aid off and, and saw the horrific nightmare that is this series. Of course, in typical me fashion, I have this bizarre need to watch animated Christian shows. VeggieTales, 321 Penguin, Gaither's Pond, whether they're good or bad, I just watch this stuff. I was raised in a Christian family. I'm familiar with Christian shows. So of course I needed to see Donkey Ollie. I thought, how did I miss this one as a kid? Uh, th 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 this should have been all over my Sunday school. Here's the reason why. It came out in 2010. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's got 2010 technology, but here we are. There are multiple episodes. There are multiple movies. There's one film in particular that I even watched at a convention with my friends and, and showed it to the audience. And the audience cried with blood dripping out of their eyes because of the nightmarish images they were seeing on the screen. And the non-stop assault of song after song after song. You don't believe me, but there is a song almost every like five minutes. It's non-stop. Stay strong, stay strong, stay strong, stay strong, stay strong. Be strong. What is that face? Oh, I hate it. On a visual level, look at this face. Look at those lips. Look at those eyes. Mm, you are, you are mutated. You are a demon from the pits of hell. And here's the truth, folks. There's so much more I can say about Donkey Ollie, but I want to save it for a future video. I am going to talk about this during Christmas. Boom, there you go. That's my gift to you all. Deal with it. Number five, Spider's Web, A Pig's Tale. I've seen some pretty convoluted plots in my time, but this one's one of the worst. You would think, oh, playing on Charlotte's Web, you know, with the spider and the pig, you even got that in this movie. It's gonna be on the farm most likely. Nah, no it's not. It's about a pig and a spider and a hornet, getting into a car with a snake, hanging out with aliens, driving to Hollywood, and the pig trying to become a celebrity. Yeah, 
that, that that's the actual plot. You might break your neck with whiplash watching this film because it has no concern whatsoever about you following it. It just does what it wants. It goes where it wants. It is unhinged and it will take you for a ride. Uh, just like The Prodigy, I own the DVD for this one and I'm going to read the back. Last time I tried to read the back, I, <laughs> I laughed. So it might happen again. Here we go. <clears throat> Walter Pembroke III is a pampered pig who enjoys a lavish lifestyle, including membership in the exclusive Barnyard Social Registry. Tiffany, Walt's best friend, is a tough-talking spider who gets little respect. This unlikely duo's friendship is being put to the test, however, by Walter's tangled web of lies. When a pie disappears... <laughs> this last line is just so out there. It's so bizarre. Here, this is not even made up. Here we go. <clears throat> when a pie disappears, Walter blames UFOs. When a ball breaks, it's a ghost fault. Can Tiffany convince Walt that lying doesn't pay? I don't know. But if you watch this movie, you're going to pay with your sanity. Number four, Trollland. For those who watch my videos, you might be shocked right now. For a long time, I've touted around Trollland as one of the worst, if not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Once more, a testament to a time when I was more innocent and sheltered from the horrors of the world. But times change and so do I. And Trollland's been bumped down to number four. It's a film that was a ripoff, I don't think intentionally, but definitely with the marketing, of Trolls from DreamWorks. Though it is nothing like Trolls. This movie has a story that's pretty basic. Just a little boy at a camp becoming friends with a troll and then bridging their societies together where the human campers can live kumbaya with the trolls who are constantly trying to prank them for this weird background reason. Something about trolls like, it's always been pranking. It's been our in our blood. It's how we survive. But the troll, voiced by John Rule, becomes friends with a little boy who they have a lot of similarities. Uh, for one, their bodies are completely broken. That's one of the biggest parts about this movie that blows my mind, the animation. The character models don't look that bad, but the animators who use them to move them, what the hell? They have just, this just doesn't work. Clipping through constantly, broken limbs, awful walk cycles, the lighting, the way that the textures work with the models and they're put on the ground and interact with the environment. Ugh, ugh, what the hell? This is awful. Truly, 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 from a visual point of view, this movie's horrendous. But there's enough about it for you to laugh. Not on purpose, not that the film is intentionally gaining your admiration through its witty dialogue or physical comedy. No, you're laughing at how bad it is, so at least there's that. I never thought I would ever say that about Trollland. Oh God, I have fallen from grace. Number three, The Misty Green Sky. So I reviewed this movie earlier in 2020 and it's truly horrendous. It's on Amazon Prime, of course. It's a film trying to be a serious sci-fi pick, talking about how there are certain people in life who are talked down to, where there's information being withheld from them that the people in this world who control it look down on others and try to guide them without listening to them. So there are some interesting plot points that could have worked, but they're so poorly executed and the burn of this movie is painful, where there are moments where it's just floating around. And I mean that, literal floating with this character just going right through a air latch in a space station. This girl who looks like she's from the fifth element. And I'm also pretty certain that these character models were downloaded through a program and the guy who made it just was like, okay, I have the models, I'll just animate them now. Which is not like a bad thing, but it's definitely noticeable. Oh, I need girl characters, just change the hair. Just change the models a bit, there we go, good to go. I need a new outfit, don't worry, got you covered. As a matter of fact, I got you covered for the next seven scenes. That's right, we're changing our outfits that quickly because why the hell not? But the best thing of all to me are the facial expressions. <laughs> they are meme worthy. Seriously, 
Uh, there's a particular scene with this girl running down a hallway where she's like, uh, something's going wrong. What do we do? And the guy's like, well, obviously, since something went wrong, we have to kill ourselves by blowing up a space station. And she's like, uh, no, I'm going to run for my life and scream. And it's going to go on for like 10 seconds and then I'm going to die. Sure, why not? Animated. Sounds good to me. Number two, Dingo Pictures. All of it. I say all of it because when it comes to Dingo Pictures, the animation, the dialogue, the voice acting, the characters, everything. It all feels like it's the same. There are really no big differences at all, in my opinion. Whether it be Pocahontas, whether it be the little dinosaur, it truly feels like it's cut from the same cloth every single time. So I consider all of it to be a giant blob of Dingo Picture films that have easily secured the number two spot. They're ugly, they're boring, they're static. The voice acting is atrocious. The music drowns out some of the audio sometimes. The story itself, basic as hell, and barely holds my interest. It doesn't hold my interest at all, actually. It's painful to stay invested in these films and try to follow what's happening. And the entire time you're watching it, you're like, yep, that's a ripoff, Land Before Time. Disney's Pocahontas, The Lion King. Yeah, all of them, just massive ripoffs. The only thing that this film has to offer is the initial laughter of like, wow, this looks awful. Ha 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 ha. And also there's the E dinosaur meme that came from it. So there's that at least. There's one shred of merit, but folks, nothing, truly nothing compares to number one. I watched a film a few weeks ago that handedly took the number one spot and became the worst animated film I've ever seen. Actually, it might be just the worst film I've ever seen, period. But before we get to that, some honorable mentions. Christmas in New York, Son of Aladdin, Food Fight, The Adventures of Panda Warrior, and not Joshua and the Promised Land. Now hear me out, all right? I know I've said it's the worst film ever before in the past. I know I put it on my old top 10 list, but nowadays I see it in a new light. There is such authenticity and effort that went into this magnificent film and has changed minds and lives and, and, and I hold it dear. It's like a sweet, naive little child who like gave you a macaroni picture and was like, look, I made movie. And you're like, yes, you did. You made a movie and I'm proud of you. And, and that's Joshua and the Promised Land to me. And I stand by it. A hundred percent do I stand by this beautiful hot mess. Right, Monkey Moses? No, no! Oh, <laughs> haven't heard one of those in a while, have you? But enough about that. Let's talk about number one. What could possibly be number one? Well, I'll tell you. The Adventures of Achilla. Genuinely the worst. Like I said before, there's good bad and there's bad bad. Good bad has effort. Good bad has some shred of talent or authenticity to it. They had a goal, they tried, they failed. Bad bad is when they are deliberately bad, which sucks, but still might have some talent. Bad bad might be boring, but still have some kind of know-how of what they're doing. Oh, you can animate, or you can voice act, or you can write some kind of story, okay. Folks, this film has nothing. It is the definition of empty. An empty story with empty characters that cannot hold your attention. Whether you're an adult or your child, there is no hope of you actually following this film. The story synopsis is about this little girl who lives in a town who meets up with her friend and they go to a guy who tells stories and then they need to go get a weed to heal the guy. Along the way, they're being tracked down by a troll who never talks, just grunts. That's all he says. They go to the top of a mountain, get the weed, come back down, give it to the guy. And then the storyteller goes on for 12 minutes telling a story with no visuals. I've suffered a lot while watching these films, all of them, but that was the hardest thing I've ever had to watch. 12 minutes of an old man talking and talking and talking with no visuals. 
no visuals to go along with the story at least. Instead, it's just him talking and the kids watching and the occasional horse model from another program. And by the way, these visuals are all downloaded by some program, I'd imagine. I don't know which one, but I'm pretty sure the person who made this movie did not animate any of these characters or design them. They're downloaded. Oh, I need my character to run. Run command. There it is. Oh, uh, what do we put here in this part of the movie? Uh, don't worry. We'll look at the goats and sheep for the next 30 seconds. I'm not joking. I'm 100% serious. What's the point of the troll? Why is he following the kids? Never explained. They go up to a cave to get the weed. Oh, is there gonna be some kind of climax or conflict? Nope, they got it. Time to go back. And what's the theme of the entire, the entire movie? Go to school, that's it. And at the end of the film, they've got like 15 quotes from actual people throughout history about the goodness of education and school one after the other after the other and it's like where did that come from that's the theme that's what you've been going after this entire time random characters showing up why don't know random characters with no consequence or no purpose to their characters whatsoever awful awful dialogue and awful voice acting it feels like skyrim npc characters that's what i would say not even skyrim like morrowind this movie is like following three NPCs from Elder Scrolls going on a quest. Bye. That's, that's the movie. And it sounds much more entertaining than what it actually is. So yeah, I, I can't go any further. It's just that bad. If you want to watch the movie, it's on Amazon Prime, of course, but honest to God, this is the worst movie I've ever seen it is painful it is abysmally painful boring no enthusiasm no substance awful animation awful dialogue shots that have no consequence where they're just focusing on something for no reason hey it's a dog let's look at the dog for the next 10 seconds why don't know why not the only part of this film that has a shred of entertainment is when this green alien shows up out of nowhere to dance for the kids. I'm going to dance for you. Are you ready? Yes, yes we, are we are ready. That's it. And there's no explanation behind it. This green alien just comes out of nowhere. He's like, hey, I'm gonna dance for you. And then you see the character dance around with, I imagine something that was downloaded, like the animation for the dance, was downloaded from a website, which is why it looks halfway competent. And then the kids jive with it. They're all synced up with their dances, thrown down with the green alien. And then the Kermit the Frog alien just disappears. That's the highlight of the entire film. And everything else is just downhill. The film starts off below sea level. So take that for what it's worth. <sighs> yeah, this is the worst folks. The Adventures of Achilla is the number one worst film I've ever seen and I would be hard pressed to find something that defeats it. Cause this film is a combination of incompetence, low quality, boredom, and it retroactively like destroys you where you feel your brain cells actually dying out in your skull. It's that bad. So a word of warning to anyone watching this video, if you want to save yourself from having an aneurysm, do not watch the adventures of Achilla. Take it from me. It's not worth it. Once again, a big shout out to this video sponsor, Vessi. Earlier this year, I started to work out again, but my old shoes were killing my feet. But then I stumbled across Vessi and fell in love with their shoes. I legit own three pairs and I wear them all the time. One pair for exercising and two other pairs for casual day-to-day -day wear. They're comfortable, they're stylish, and they're also waterproof. It's so nice that I can walk my dog in the rain and not have to worry about the wet pavement or grass messing up my shoes. Also, Vessi's shoes are super easy to keep clean. You can rinse off smudge with water or even toss them into a washing machine. Though, give them one day to dry up before you put them back on. Like, I am still surprised how comfortable and breathable Vessi's shoes can be. I typically wear mine without socks. And, in my opinion, I think they feel much better that way. I think it's due to the stuff Vessi's shoes are made of. Dymatex. 
It's a dual climate knit that keeps your feet cool in the summertime and warm during the winter. All in all, I am a very pleased customer when it comes to Vessi, and they're absolutely my go-to shoes that hang out near my front door. Whenever I gotta exercise or run to the coffee shop, I slip them on and I'm on my way. And the icing on the cake? They're sustainably made. No animal byproducts, less material waste, less water waste, all in all, good stuff across the board. And guess what? There's even an early holiday sale going on right now. Hop to it now, and don't wait to the last minute to do your holiday shopping. Vessi shoes are great gifts for you and loved ones. Hell, I'm gonna buy my father a pair for Christmas so he can put up with rainy weather and style. So get them now while a variety of sizes are still available. Hit up the link below to get in on the holiday sale. And if you do miss it, I got your back. Use my code SABERSPARK to get $25 off your Vessi shoes. Once more, I only promote products and services on my channel that I would personally use. And I genuinely love my Vessi shoes. I highly recommend them.